capital city of Malaysia. The most stylish, comfortable bus. It's a central market, Peddling Street in Chinatown. Our first street food, very spicy. You feel like you're out in the forest. Next stop. On top of the world over here. It's a long line. Fly two caves before sunrise. That's amazing. Getting so aggressive with tourists. Like and subscribe. Where do we go from? Where do we go from here? Can't believe it's already time for us to leave, but on the way to the bus, we'll be dreaming about one more delicious memory of Penang cuisine. And there's more than just street food. The pastry house has the best shepherd's pie I've had in years. And the place is adorable. Mushroom soup and pup pastry breadsticks. They melt in your mouth. They're sweet. And creamy mushroom pie. So like fluffy. Peppery and creamy. I think we picked a winner tonight. And the PA's the resistance, the chicken shepherd's pie. Oh, very creamy, very chickeny. Mashed potatoes on top with just enough spices. What a delightful dish. There goes our great grab driver. He dropped us off on the only dry spot of the entire area. Better early than late. They don't open for another half hour. We're on the way from Penang to Kuala Lumpur in the most stylish, comfortable bus. I think they've upgraded since we were last time. It's even better than I remember. This is all new. These are really comfortable. These, these work. I love sitting in the front. You can actually see and they don't get car sick. We go and it's raining, so perfect day to be inside. You see fried rice. Really good. Have y'all been to Kuala Lumpur? I give you the world's tallest building at home of the International Clearance Bank. Do I have your attention now? I popped in to grab to the hotel because riding is easier than walking. Winston Churchill said, why stand when you can sit? Especially with bags. And grab in Malaysia is really affordable. Kuala Lumpur is the capital city of Malaysia with almost 2 million residents. It's everything here from the high tech, like new age, super fast, driverless subway systems to ancient neighborhoods. Our first stop is the Central Market. Locally known as Pasar Seni, this market's been in operation since the late 1800s. Pasar Seni, the cultural bazaar, was originally constructed in 1888 as Pasar Bazaar, the Central Market, to serve KL's large tin mining community. It was a full wet market, selling everything from fish and spices to tools and clothing. It is very lively, both in doors and out. As the population grew rapidly, exponential growth. The market kept pace with the renovations and upgrades, acquiring its Art Deco style in 1936. By the 1980s, the market was scheduled for demolition, but was saved by the Malaysian Heritage Trust and rebranded as the Cultural Bazaar in 1986. Since then, it's remained a popular market for locals and has become a major tourist attraction. Tourists spend money! Peddling Street in Chinatown. The central shopping area is a pedestrian only street, although you still need to watch out for the occasional scooter. Honey Jim, honey Jim. There is pretty much anything you can imagine to buy, much like most of the markets around here. And there is supposed to be some great street food, so let's see if we can find some. As we said, no vehicles allowed, but you know. And I know there is no cure Drowning Adi I'm just in it for the Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home It's 100 degrees, so these must be for bank robbery Just a highlight twist on the Our first 
street food sampling of the day, the five spice pork roll. Pork meat roll. Oh, dried meat with a edible paper. The spicy sauce is very spicy. Try these. These are delicious. You're the Noid. I am not the Noid. Drowning, Adi. I'm just in it for the... Nestled away amid the skyscrapers of Kuala Lumpur cityscape lies the Forest Eco Park. This urban rainforest sanctuary offers a breathtaking escape into nature, just walking distance from some of the city's biggest attractions. It's the perfect place to take a relaxing stroll through the rainforest canopy and enjoy gorgeous city views from suspended bridges. Don't forget to bring your water. It's kind of cool that this is in the middle of KL. You feel like you're out in the forest. I am surprised that I thought I'd see more birds. Haven't seen one yet. And if you're wondering why everything before this was voiceovered while people's lips were moving, it's because I forgot to turn the mics on. So, my bad. We made some new friends at the top of the hill and helped them out with some filming. We are doing an assignment from City University to do hiking and then picnic. Light and <laughs> sit <laughs> And sweat. Thank you. We've got incoming freshmen to University of Oregon. Throw your own, baby. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Woo! <laughs> Next stop, KL Tower, and I really hope they have an elevator. Like there is not a lot of shade around here. I'm hoping there's some more that way. Stuck in our glory days. Time for a coffee break. Yeah, talking about coffee. Coffee, condensed cream, and coconut. That is a fantastic combination. They do have an elevator. This is amazing up here. Well, we are definitely standing on top of the world over here. Holy cow! That giant building is Merdeka 118. It's the second highest building in the world next to the Burj Khalifa. The repair does not look so good. There's windows and stuff falling out of it. Probably don't want to be the face of that. Wow, KL Tower, I did not expect it to be that cool. That was a lot of fun. I would have bypassed it. I said, oh, it's a tower. But it was cool. The city's beautiful on this gorgeous sunny day. You hungry? I could eat. I'm so hungry I could eat domestic caviar. <laughs> I'm so hungry I could eat a flisbit. I'm so hungry I could eat this dead camper. Dine in that way, take it away that way, dine in that way, and we'll just stand here. Damascus Barbecue, we're going here because there's a long line. We thought this place was a former place, but the menu is huge, so I think we'll be feasting. Stuck in the past. Great salad. Lemon mint polo. Ooh, lemon and mint, it's very refreshing. Oh, yeah, it's a shawarma. Oh, wow. The yogurt sauce and the meat and the bread is crispy. Well, we're coming back here and eating maize on the go. That's an amazing. And the final plate has arrived. Next, our bread. Autobots, fall back. Get to the tower! We are obviously down at the Patronus Twin Towers. A full body Patronus is the most difficult to produce. We're having people take pictures of us, we're taking pictures of them. It's nice. The traveling spirit is back. Travelers are just helping each other. People actually talk to you when you talk to them. It is a beautiful time to be traveling and experience the world again. Kuala Lumpur is more than we remember. We are having such an awesome time here. It's digital windows at level 41.
Now we're up on the top floor. We're on the 86th floor. We're not quite up top, but we're pretty close. The building over there is the second tallest building in the world. There's KL Tower right over there where we were yesterday. We're back in the little elevator going down the floors to get in the bigger elevator that goes down to the sky bridge that will get another big elevator that will go all the way down the bottom. This is way cooler than we thought it was going to be. So I gotta see if I can mend him. So, uh, Instagram versus reality moment, I guess, huh? Wow. Early the next morning, located just a short train ride from KL Central Station, Batu Caves is an essential stop on any tourist itinerary. Batu Caves before sunrise. Dominating the landscape is the striking 140-foot gold statue of Murdergon the Destroyer. The steps are beautifully painted in a myriad of colors. And there's about 4 million of them, so enjoy the walk to the top. And there's still a lot more to go. If you're lucky or unlucky, the steps will be crawling with monkeys. We got here early today. Morning view of Kuala Lumpur. Not a lot of monkeys in the morning, but we're hoping to see some this afternoon. See, not touch. I came to see monkeys, but they're apparently very lazy. So hopefully on the way down. We usually don't like to get up before sunrise, but this is definitely worth it. And once inside, there's even more stairs. It's still not quite sunrise. And now Katie's trip is complete. The chickens of Batu Caves. Batu Caves is free. I would even pay money to come here. It is stunning. From the hike up it to the epic inside, it's a must see. That's beautiful. And there's the monkeys. Hold on to your stuff. This giant green monkey statue is Hanuman, a revered monkey deity in Hinduism who assisted Lord Rama in the Ramayana. His extraordinary devotion and strength were evident when he carried Rama and Lakshmana in his chest, symbolizing unwavering loyalty and exceptional abilities in Hindu mythology. They set out food for him, which probably keeps him from getting so aggressive with tourists. That's a good idea. Next week on Behind the Laughter, Huckleberry Hound. having this place almost to ourselves earlier. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Situated in the heart of the city, the National Mosque of Malaysia, Masjid Negara, is one of the most iconic landmarks in Kuala Lumpur. We're at the National Mosque of Malaysia. In order to enter, you need to fill out a registration form saying where you're from, what your religion is, how many people are in your party, and if you meet the dress code. If not, we got these snazzy things. Thankfully, they provide robes right here. Voila. So these robes are synthetic and absolutely broiling hot. Built in the 1960s, the mosque architecture is a blend of traditional Islamic and modern styles with a minaret reaching 73 meters into the city's skyline and a capacity of 15,000 people. The mosque is open to non-Muslims and is a popular tourist destination. And that's it. It's over. Damn it. Just like that. And Kuala Lumpur was wonderful from the food to seeing Batu Caves and the monkeys and then just wandering around. It was
is incredible. And there's so much to do around here with an easy driving distance. And now we're back on an airline bus heading to Singapore. The border crossing should be easy, but uh, we'll see. Step one is Malaysia passport control. Super easy, just hop off the bus. You want to get your passports then, hop back on the bus. Now we hit to the Singapore side. Thank <laughs> you.